Your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. It was nice to see the sunshine after such an active weekend, helping to melt away some of the snow that we've seen across the viewing area. And with uh, more mild temperatures in the days ahead, we'll probably be able to be we'll probably be able to melt a lot of that. Right now, you can see from Gibson City on our Gibson Area Hospital and Health Services weather camera on our roofing dog, and it's all clear out there. But our temperatures actually still pretty mild currently, as you can tell. It's 33 still in Lincoln, 31 in Decatur, 26 in Champaign, 28 in Watsika, and 25 in Pontiac. Now we do have a bit of a breeze out there coming in out of the northwest up to around 15 miles an hour and the gusts in some spots are around 20 miles an hour but they are weakening as we go through the rest of the evening. We're actually going to see likely an increase in clouds as we go through the overnight hours tonight but we're still expecting a pretty nice day for our Tuesday as well as for our Wednesday as well. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. It's difficult to see but the woman behind the wheel was simply doing her job another woman why she was brutally assaulted in her own car plus police are investigating an afternoon shooting where gunfire sent one person to the hospital and also tonight no school doesn't mean kids won't be fed the incredible number of meals that are going out to those in need you're watching your local news leader this is wcia 3 news at six One woman was brutally beaten in her car last week. Another woman is now behind bars. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The woman drives for the Department of Children and Family Services. It was her last pickup where things went wrong. WCI3's Bryce Beeman is live in the newsroom. So Bryce, the video that we are going to see is intense. What happened? The driver was bringing the mother to a visitation. Instead, she was beaten and left bleeding. Like it started as a routine pickup for Brandy Collins turned south. Collins went to Danville to pick up Charmaine Hatley. In dash cam video, you hear Hatley accusing Collins of taking a wrong turn. Collins then says she doesn't know Danville when the situation escalates. You just never know when you're given rides like that, you really have to be cautious. <laughs> Hatley grabbed Collins by the hair and started punching her in the face. In the video, Collins asked Hatley to stop. After about two minutes, Hatley gets out of the car, leaving Collins beaten and bleeding. She then drove herself um, to a friend's house out of town, where then she was then uh, transported by ambulance to the hospital from that location. Collins filed a police report with the Danville Police Department. Quickly after, Hatley was arrested and charged. She is still in custody. Patrol commander with Danville Police Department, Terry McCord, recommends if you are a driver for any organization to be prepared for all situations. You always want to have your phone accessible, uh, maybe even look at getting an app where there's it's a some type of a one button push to call 911. Commander McCord also recommends pepper spray or dashboard cameras. Fortunately for Collins, she has video of the assault. For uh, her to have that lie or you know recorded live like it happened and then be able to give that to the police to the investigators who in turn you know can show that to the to the uh, state's attorney's office that's going to be huge in, in helping her with her case collins does have an attorney she is waiting for the case to go to court to speak any further on this matter i reached out to dcfs to see their policy on something like this happening and was not able to get a hold of anyone in the newsroom i'm bryce beeman wcia3 your local news leader oh, bryce thank you so much Police are investigating a shooting. It happened this afternoon at the Town & Country Apartments in Urbana. That's also off of Kerr Avenue. One person was taken to the hospital. No report on the person's condition or suspects. We're working to learn more about what happened and we'll keep you updated. It's been almost 14 years, but one family is still searching for a missing woman. And there's a reward if you have any information. Jamie Harper disappeared after leaving a party in Rantoul in 2007. She has never been found. Ford County Crime Stoppers is now offering an almost $3,000 reward. A fund was set up at the Paxton Bank for any information on Harper. The bank recently closed the account after years of inactivity. So Ford County Crime Stoppers is now putting the money in its general fund. The state's seven-day positivity rate has dropped again. It's now 4.9%. The last time it was that low, October 10th. 
but there are 2,300 new infections that were identified in the state in the last 24 hours, along with 16 additional deaths. Now, the state did set a new record for the number of vaccine doses administered on Saturday, almost 37,000. However, weather upended progress yesterday as fewer people showed up and only 14,000 plus rolled up their sleeves. In Macon County, health officials say they are booked for COVID-19 vaccine clinics this week. Scheduling started at noon. It's for people who fall into the 1A or 1B groups. That means health care and frontline essential workers. Now, if you're getting a shot, you need to bring a work ID or pay stub to prove your frontline status. More clinics will be available weekly. While some pandemic restrictions are easing in our area, many school districts are still not serving meals inside. Instead, they're handing them out to families, and that's no easy feat. WCI3's Courtney Bunting is live outside of Jefferson Middle School in Champaign. Courtney, that's one of the distribution spots for that school district. Jennifer, that's right, and this is the one that we visited today, and school officials here said that they expected around 240 meals to be distributed from here just today alone. In fact, through school districts in Champaign County between March and November, more than one million meals were distributed to families who needed them. We have a lot of unanswered questions with the pandemic right now, but the one thing we know for sure is that kids are going to still need access to those nutritious meals. And the responsibility of serving them falls on the shoulders of people working in school districts. It's a learning process because things change, keep changing every day. Uh, one day we might be doing one thing, next day it might be just totally opposite. Despite those challenges, many, like Food Services Coordinator Linda Jones, are rising to the occasion. We're basically taking what we typically do in a five-day school week, um, we're doing it in one day. Food Service Director Laura Dees says the Champaign School District is operating through its summer meal program. It was extended because of COVID-19. Have a good day. Thank you. So once a week, families drive up and pick up as many meals as they need. That distribution is happening at three different spots, one being Jefferson Middle School. Mondays will continue to be a distance learning day for the entire district, so we will continue to do our distribution of meals on Mondays. Dees says the pandemic has really highlighted a need they already knew existed, and they're happy to help fill it. We know many people have lost their jobs or laid off temporarily, so we want to be able to provide. In addition, um, many of our school age children rely on school meals each school day, so we want to make sure that we continue to provide them meals, even when they're not in person learning. Those distributions, they happen between 10 and 1 today, so that's not what's going on here tonight. It's finished up for the day, but those meals are for anyone 18 or younger. The district also does provide home deliveries, but the families need to figure that situation out with the district if that's what they require or what they're more comfortable with. Live in Champaign, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Courtney, thank you so much. What used to be three empty lots in Champaign are now the sites of three new homes for people in need. Restoration Urban Ministries owns two of the lots. The man living here is paying the mortgage. Someone else paid about the 30000 to build it. There's another mini home in Champaign that belongs to a man who used to be homeless. His mortgage was covered and the house was furnished. The city's goal is to put these lots back to a productive purpose. Um, we want to get them removed from the city's ongoing maintenance. So it's a, it's a great win when we can collaborate with community partners to provide housing. Now there's a third mini home being furnished, finished at the corner of Bradley and Walnut. It's part of a solar home project and uses what's called green building strategies. It'll be operated by Habitat for Humanity. And speaking of those in need, one winter night provides an opportunity to learn about homelessness. This year, WCIA is hosting a fundraiser in our back lot. Each box dweller is committed to raising at least $1,000 to help CU at Home provide services. That will be February 5th, or you can donate right now by going to WCIA.com. It's the signature win the Alana we're looking for where they have moved in the rankings after beating Iowa. Also tonight, Republicans are calling it controversial curriculum. What they're claiming is wrong with some new rules from the State Board of Education. And, okay, we are finally taking a break yes. from the snow. I just see, see, kept, kept
coming and coming and coming. And it seems like we just can't get rid of wintry mix either when these systems come through. So it's nice to have a bit of a break today as well as for the next few days, things are being quiet as well. But we're still using wintry mix, unfortunately, to describe a, dis to describe a system on the way. So we're not done with that just yet. In the meantime, though, we'll see that uh, high temperatures today were actually pretty close to normal with all the sunshine. We we're able to get to around 32. Now coming up, we're going to be talking more about those systems here over the next few days, as well as a very cold weekend expected after the break.